Hey, what's up everyone? So a few videos ago, I talked about Psych. And in this video, I'm gonna to decide to talk about its brother's show, Monk. Or at least, it, it, sister show? I don't know, the shows aren't related, but they get compared together so often because they were on the same network around the same time. So yeah, let's just get on with the video. Adrian Monk is a former detective for the San Francisco Police Department who had to be dismissed from the force after the tragic murder of his wife, Trudy Monk. This specific incident caused him to either develop OCD or further intensify it. The show is kind of hazy on what, which one it is. Already an odd character from birth, this traumatic incident further caused him to stand out and made him mentally unfit for official police work. Now, during his absence, he serves as a consultant for the department. Throughout the whole show, we see how his skills are so vital to the police department, but his own fears and phobias not only keep him off the police force, but sometimes get in the way of catching the bad guys. Throughout the show, he's accompanied by his nurse, Sharona Fleming, and in the later seasons, Natalie Teeger, and he mostly works with a tough captain, Leland Sotomayor, who seems hard-nosed but would do anything to see Monk get back on the force, and Lieutenant Randy Disher, the energetic, but not always bright, sidekick to Captain Salmeyer. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? No. Now, before I talk about what makes this show so good, I just want to state that I am not going to be talking about if this show is a good reflection of OCD, phobias, and other stuff in the real world. I'm not a doctor and I don't pretend to be, so I really can't speak on if the show did a good job of reflecting that. So without further ado, let's go on to the rest of the video. Like Psych, Monk also flips the traditional detective show formula on its head. The usual form is who done it, in which the story goes along and the audience doesn't know who the criminal is. That is, until the end of the episode, when there's like a big reveal and stuff. And when you do a format like this, one of the most important parts is the shock value of who did it and the significance of why. However, in many episodes, Monk knows who did it by the middle of the episode, and he's rarely wrong. Sometimes the show even goes so far as to show you the actual crime, killer and all. They don't even try to hide it. And when they do try to hide it, at least you'll still see the act being committed. It's not like those shows where they're walking up to a dead body and we still haven't seen the producer credits and they're still on the screen. It's a nice change of pace. Bill Burr actually said it best in his special Walk Your Way Out when talking about Donald Trump. Yeah. He's so dumb I don't think he could get away with anything. You know what he reminds me of? You ever watch Law and & Order and they make an arrest in like within the first 15 minutes? You know, and they're trying to get you to think, ah, we got him, we got him. You're just looking at your watch, you're like, dude, there's no way this guy did this shit. <laughs> there's like another 45 minutes left. This can't be the guy. Who's the real guy? In some episodes, instead of wasting time figuring out who is behind the crime, we instead focus on whether something is possible or not possible. And that's the best part about the show. Monk proving who he thinks did it. Monk solving the case and having the final say on if and how someone did the crime. The clues aren't laid out and highlighted for you like they are in Psych, but over time you'll start to think like the defective detective himself. You'll start to have fun guessing on how something happened and feeling some sort of joy when you find out that you're half right or even all the way right. It allows you to solely focus on the actions and not the red herrings, the suspects, and the distractions. One of Monk's catchphrases is when he goes, he or she is the guy. What do you got? Trevor McDowell. No, he was running the marathon, it checked out. I don't know how he did it, but he's the guy. I'll tell you why. Because Gwen was killed first, then she was thrown off the balcony. That's the key. Why would the killer draw attention to himself? Well, there's only one reason, to establish the exact time of death. He wanted everyone to know precisely when she died. Why? Because he had an alibi. 
an airtight alibi. What do you think? And that means that Monk knows who did it, but he doesn't know how he did it. So basically the whole process of the episode is finding out the how, because Monk is usually not wrong. He has his suspicions, but then he gathers enough evidence and then finds the proof and then solves the case. Now the next best part of the show is the phenomenal acting job of Monk by Tony Shalhoub. Shalhoub has won three Emmys, two Screen Actors Guild Awards and one Golden Globe. He also won a Tony Award in 2018 for lead actor in a musical, The Band's Visit. What can't this man do? Shalhoub did so well as Monk that whenever you see him in anything else you go, oh shit, that's Monk. It's like me seeing James Roday as that dude in A Million Little Things. I haven't seen the show yet, but Sean Spencer is in A Million Little Things. And in my eyes, that's one of the ultimate compliments that I can give you in a role. If you are in a role so iconic that I'll always see you as that character in every other thing that you play in. Tom Hanks' Forrest Gump makes me look at Castaway and wonder what the hell happened to Forrest Gump and how he ended on that island. How did Marty McFly turn into a skateboarding mouse? How did Seinfeld turn into a bee? How did Thanos turn into Cable? How did Andy Griffith turn into Matlock? Uh, all right, let me, let me calm down. But you do see what I'm saying. Shalhoub's portrayal of Adrian Monk was so believable that it didn't even feel like Shalhoub was acting. And this character is special for many reasons, but the one that sticks out to me is the way he truly humanizes the show. Throughout all of the phobias, quirks, and high maintenance that Monk carries, he is the most human person on the show. Now, of course, we don't see everything that the other characters are dealing with, but it can't be close to what Adrian Monk has gone through. The only other things that we see that are really heavy are Sharona dealing with her ex-husband and raunchy past, and Captain Stylemeyer dealing with a failed marriage, but that all pales in comparison to the emotional and psychological roller coaster that Adrian Monk deals with for eight seasons. A lot of detective shows feature people that appear to seem superhuman and aren't faced with the dangers of the stakes. But with Monk, you can sense the danger all the time because he's scared of damn near everything. Monk also goes to therapy, and that's a very instrumental part of the show because we're able to track his progress and learn more about him without it feeling like an exposition dump. He also has a lot of sentimental reasons for some of the seemingly dumb ritualistic shit he does, and most of it's related to Trudy Monk. It also shows off the fact that even though he's the best detective in California, even he still can't solve that case. Adrian Monk's growth not only gives us something to watch, but it gives us something to root for throughout the show's eight seasons. We're not just rooting for Monk to solve these cases and nondescript bad guys in every episode, but we also want him to get over his fears as well as solve the case of who killed his wife. And his wife does show up in the form of flashbacks and kind of visualizations, and it kind of shows us why Monk hasn't moved on, he hasn't tried to date anyone else, and he's just been the same person ever since she died. This inability to move on paired with his determination to solve the case just further highlights how strong Monk's love is for Trudy. A comparison for this is the show Perception, the now cancelled show star Daniel Pierce, a brilliant professor who is also a paranoid schizophrenic who helps solve cases with the FBI. The thing about Perception that makes the show low-key weird is the fact that Daniel Pierce has these hallucinations that are visible to us. However, we don't always know what's a hallucination and what isn't. While these hallucinations help Pierce solve cases, it also confuses the audience in what is real and not real. It's obvious when they flash back to Trudy or imagine Trudy. Now the only thing that I wish would have happened in the show is if we got more flashbacks about Adrian Monk growing up or Adrian Monk operating while Trudy was alive. I say this because it's really hard to tell sometimes how quirky he was before the accident and what changed after the accident. We learn that he has a very stressful family upbringing. And he also talks about how he was bullied in school and being made fun of for being different and stories that tell him about why he did certain things like why he quit running back in high school. I also would have appreciated if they focused on the Trudy Monk case a little bit more have her being more prominent in the show, giving us more clues to help solve the case or more backstory instead of them shoving a lot in the last two episodes. I didn't really have a problem with it back then, but looking back, it does kind of feel a little bit awkward to me. Also, the solving of the case takes a while and sometimes the clues and breaks in the case are spread out so far apart throughout the series 
that you honestly forget some of the details. For example, Monk and the gang get one of the clues at the beginning of Season 3. It's an important clue, and you keep it in your mind for a while. After a red herring about the same clue in Season 4, the clue actually comes into effect in Season 6. And I'm sorry, but I think that's a really, really long time in between clues and plot points. This is a minor nitpick, but I wish there was more evidence in focusing on Trudy's murder than there really was in the show. That way we could at least have had some time to theorize and get to know the people involved in the crime or something. But I understand why it wasn't like this. Anyway, this is one of my favorite shows. You can find it on Amazon Prime right now. It's not a sponsor, but I think that's the only place where you can find it for free if you have Amazon Prime. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Join the Cooler Club and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! Just a little bit.